Crystal from Crystal's Den and Garden, aka Crystal's Den. And last summer, I had my first ever big garden. And while it was super successful and super fun, I definitely made a lot of mistakes along the way. So today I wanted to talk to you about five mistakes that I made as a beginner gardener and give you some tips to help you not make those same mistakes as well. So the first mistake I made was just being disorganized and not having much of a plan. I knew I bought seeds and I bought dirt and I knew I had, and I had pallets and I knew I wanted to grow in that, but that was really the extent of my um, like planning. And so it kind of became overwhelming and I was doing a lot of like learning along the way, failing along the way, all of that. So a tip I want to give you is to just ask yourself, you know, certain questions that you have an idea of what you're working with and how you want to get your garden started. Stuff like where, what are you going to grow? Um, where will your garden be located? Um, how much space do you have to work with for your garden? Especially how much space do you have for your, for any of the type of crops that you're growing? Um, when will you have time to garden? Um, and also just like, why is the location that you hit, that you chose a really good one? Um, kind of asking yourself these questions will really kind of help you uh, not feel so overwhelmed um, as you go into, you know, the growing season. Um, having a journal is very helpful too, as well as maybe making like a photo diagram, just of like the space you're working with and kind of like drawing out and placing where you want to put your different veggies and fruits on there. Um, that's something I'm utilizing this year and it has definitely been way more helpful. And my second mistake that I made was not providing my uh, crops with adequate lighting. The plate, the, the, there was places that I had put certain fruits and uh, certain vegetables um, that they weren't getting enough sun. A quick anecdote, I had my tomatoes in my east flower bed and that flower bed gets sprinkles of sun in the morning, then shade and then sprinkles of sun later. So it doesn't get that full sun. Most crops need six to eight hours of sun a day, tomatoes included. So once I moved them to my backyard, which gets sun all day, they thrived and I got tomatoes all summer. So I say all that to say is, you know, I put the, the I put those tomatoes there because I thought they would be a step pleasing you know I was like oh this is gonna be really cute right here this is what I want but you know especially when gardening it's not about what we want especially when we think about placement it's about what's going to be good for the crop and how it's going and, and, and putting it in a place where they're going to be able to grow abundantly and efficiently so just make sure that anything you're growing pay attention to the lighting requirements if it needs full sun give it that full sun if it needs less then pay attention to that as well the third mistake I made also has to do with plant placement, and that was just planting things too close to each other. When I had my transplants from seeds I had uh, seeds I had cultivated or just transplants I bought, I would, you know, kind of bunch them up. I did that with my tomatoes, I did that with my squash, and I just kind of had them all kind of close together. When you read the packets in a lot of these, though, they say they need like three feet apart. But because everything was so small, I just wasn't thinking about, you know, the end goal of like, this stuff is gonna grow so it needs room and especially viney vegetables like squash pumpkins and watermelon they are gonna vine out they can go up to like 30 feet i've heard so i say all that to say make sure you're paying attention to the the placements of your your plants your seeds uh, whenever even when you're planting it small or big that placement will determine um how well everything is going to grow and it will also make sure that you know the plants aren't fighting for nutrients, fighting for space, fighting for resources. So make sure you give them that room so that they can grow abundantly um, and, you know, just grow really well. So the fourth mistake I made was not keeping up with weeds or just like grass maintenance. I had put down cardboard, put my pallets on top of the cardboard, put the dirt in it, the, and then that's where I put it in my plants. Um, but you know, once the cardboard broke down, it allowed new, the grass and the weeds to kind of grow up even around the perimeter of the garden. I had put cardboard in a little bit of mulch, but I didn't put enough. And there was just, it just got really overwhelming and just, it grew kind of wild weeds coming up to the bed, grass on the perimeter, very hard to maintain, especially when it gets to that point. So this year's something I'm going to be doing with in all my beds and around the perimeter of my garden is adding mulch. Uh, mulch is so good not only for keeping moisture in the soil whenever you water, but it's also good for um, 
like keeping weeds away. If you can pile it up to like four or five inches or even higher, then it, it, no weeds or grass or anything will be able to grow up, um, grow up through it. So I'm going to be mulching this year and mulch is definitely going to be a really great remedy to help you keep those weeds and grass down in your garden. Um, also just having a raised bed, like off the ground, that was very helpful too. And then the fifth mistake that I made was just not being patient. I was very impatient at times, especially when I was making seedlings. If they didn't sprout, I would maybe throw the dirt in another container only to see it sprouted later, you know, or just watering when I didn't need to water or picking tomatoes that were not ready, but you know, they, that weren't fully red. They, they were, you know, they weren't ripe or anything. So different things like that. And as someone who struggles with patience already, like gardening has definitely given me the space to really like become more patient and, you know, let things like go just like, you know, just let things grow and just trusting the process. So I just want to encourage you to, to just really like be patient with yourself and with the garden this year. Uh, most crops even take about 90 to 100 days to even fully mature. So that means that they need time to be able to grow and develop. We did our part as, you know, planting and, and giving them, you know, nutrients and giving them a good space to grow. Um, now it's time for their, them to do their part. So be patient, trust the process, it'll all go well. All right, y'all, thank you so much for um, watching this video. I hope this really helped you think of, you know, things to avoid or just even maybe things that you hadn't thought about um, as a beginner gardener. Um, thank you again for watching. Again, I'm Crystal from Crystal's Den and Garden, aka Crystal's Den, and I can't wait to talk to you again next time.